Hello and welcome to Infinity. I spent a couple of videos talking about some of the colour selection, the free macro set that I'm giving away, and we've done the RGB ones and the HSL. Now we're going to look at these two colour selection, Delta E. It's a funny name, but it comes from the, the CIE, the international organisation that defines these things, and there's E76, which was defined in 1976, and E94. The difference is that the E94 is more complex, which means it will take longer. So if you haven't got a fast processor, you might want to use the E76. Otherwise, they're pretty similar. E76 isn't quite as accurate as E94, but for most purposes, it's just fine. So what we're going to do is with this, going to go to, let's just click on the E76 here. I'm going to show a technique that you can use here as well. So it's not just using this straight off. So if I turn off the bottom layer here, you can see what's selected. And here it's pretty much black, but with a bit of green in it. And the reason is if I pull this up a bit here, I've got tolerance and hardness on here. So the tolerance is turned up. So that's allowed the darker colours, the dark greens, to come in here. If I turn this down, you can see you get down to pretty much just the blacks being shown because that's zero, zero, zero is black. So it's useful usually to have it up somewhere around the quarter mark, something like that, which gives it a little bit of leeway. Hardness, if you turn the hardness up, you can see it kind of like, it's pretty much the same stuff, but kind of the edge is hardened. And if you turn it down, it's a very soft selection. So. Let's use the this here to select thing, but turn the bottom layer on first. We can see the whole one. Let's drag that down here. I'm going to go into the red there and then click on the pipette again. And it puts the red to here, whereupon it appears on here. So I've got 20400. So just 204 here and then 00. Now, if I turn off the bottom layer, you can see what's selected here. And this is pretty accurate here, picking that red out with a bit of tolerance, which is why you're seeing other things. And you can play around with this to, am I going to improve the amount selected here? Maybe a little bit, but that's okay. Now then I want to get to another one. And this is the technique. And I can either duplicate this layer and do it again, or I can go to the bottom and turn off the top one. So I've got the original layer here and then just click on the colour selection here again. And it puts another one on top. I'm just going to keep this layer here and use the pipette here. Drag that down. I'm going to pick up some of this pink here. And then click on the pipette again so it comes onto here and then this gives me this. So i now got an RGB for the pink. So double click here and just put in here. It's two to one. 106 and 123 and bring this up here turn off the bottom layer so I can see what's being selected this is the pink here so a few more things here so maybe if I turn down the tolerance a bit maybe turn up the hardness a bit so it's more selected there so it's up and balancing these two here but it's just a little bit like that and we're going to handle all that afterwards as well. So I've got those selected here. So that's the pink one and this is the red one. So I turn on the red ones as well. You can see now it just combined the two of them. And I can actually go to these and kind of pick out some more out of this. Or I can go to the background here, turn that on and look at see where things are. So this down the bottom here, that hole is actually because there's a kind of whiter area there. So it's pretty well selected here. I could do another one for the orange, but it's, I think it's good enough with what it's got. So now what I can do is click on the top one there, shift click to select the bottom as well, control G to create a group. Now I've got this selected, I can put any controls and things I want into here. So what I'll do here is before I do anything else, I'm gonna put a mask into this group to paint away this. So I click on the mask layer and then I'm going to paint on here 
to get rid of the extra stuff. So I go to the paintbrush, which is over here, make sure it's black. Uh, opacity 100% and halfway hardness is fine. So when I paint on here, that's just going to get rid of these here. Notice this, by the way, is a bit slow in here. So here's a technique actually that you can use to do this, which is let's just go backwards. I'll delete that mask for a moment, because what we can do with this is to go to layer and merge visible. And this is going to create another layer above here, which is exactly the same as this. Because when we were masking then, it was taking a bit of time to doing it. And if you're a slow processor, that's going to be really slow. So the merge visible takes a little bit of time to create this. But now I can turn off that layer here, but I've got the same already here. It does mean if I need to want to change any of the selection, I need to go back to the group here. But this will mean the masking. So if I put on a mask here, onto that one. Now when I paint here, you can see it's a lot faster. It gets rid of things really quickly. So if you need particularly to do quite a bit of masking, then this might be a practical way to do that. So anyway, there's our selected life belt. And then what we can do here is add any other controls we want to that. We can turn the bottom layer on again now. So I could, for example, go to adjustments, go to recolor. It's appeared above here, so I want to drag it into here, if that's the way. And now I can play around with this, maybe make it a little bit of orange, say to go with a tealy colour here, and then turn down the saturation a bit, maybe darken it up a bit. And there we go. Pretty good selection of colours there, and using them just one on top of the other. Don't need to do any blend mode, and that combines them. So there you go. Hope that was useful and thank you very much for watching.